Hi guys, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. USGS posted on Twitter about two hours ago that an ongoing swarm with more than 141 earthquakes is centered beneath Yellowstone Lake. As of 1130 Mountain Time, uh, there has been 40 earthquakes larger than a magnitude 2 and two events in the magnitude 3 range. More locations will be posted throughout the day at Quake, Utah, blah, blah, blah. They evidently have been including an area that is extended from Yellowstone. Um, it was actually 145 earthquakes. Let me show you. Which has grown to 162 earthquakes. What is significant, which I hope they are watching, is the location and the depth of these earthquakes. And those of you that have been following me, I've talked about the crack, um, how the uh, last major eruption about, oh, what, 135,000 years ago, started up by Hedgen Lake. It did a counterclockwise eruption before the two resurgent domes collapse at the same time creating the super eruption. I have it on satellite view because I want to show you, let me zoom in, the area where the mountains literally blew out from this location here to this location here, whole mountains were removed. If there was to be another super eruption, everything within 500 miles would be vaporized. If there was a warning given out, that would give you about five hours to get out of the area of the pyroclastic flow and to avoid being vaporized. You would have a five hour drive. I want to cover the depth of these earthquakes. I want to cover the location of the earthquakes because they are very significant. The roof of the caldera, the very top of the roof of the caldera, caldera which would collapse is only about three miles deep under the ground. The first earthquake I want to cover happened on the 15th yesterday. It was a 0 0.6 around the ring of this ancient eruption that created the West Thumb. That was only 3.7 kilometers in depth. So that would be 2.3 miles in depth. That's it. It is in the upper part above the chamber of the magma. The magma is only three miles below the ground. I've talked about the fracturing. This is only 2.3 miles deep, this earthquake. I also want to come over here to um, Heart Lake because this is the area when it did it co its counter rotation before the collapse. This one here was 2.8 kilometers in depth. So that would be about 1.4 miles in depth. This one here was 4.2 kilometers in depth. Now this was on the 10th. That would be 2.6 miles in depth. And I've talked about many times how the magma is flowing under the ground going horizontally because of the rhyolite cap that is holding it down. Okay, let's go back up over here in this location. These were 1.8 kilometers in depth. That one's 3.9 kilometers in depth. 4.2 kilometers in depth. 4.2 kilometers is about 2 miles in depth. These are all in the roof of the caldera chamber. All shallow within the magma chamber in the roof. Now let's go to these. Remember, I've talked about this crack, the spreading that is occurring there at Yellowstone Lake. We got 60 earthquakes right here in this map area in the last 24 hours. Also, all very shallow, showing fracturing on the roof of the caldera chamber. 2.0 kilometers, 7.1 kilometers. Now, that's probably the deepest. That is 4.1 kilometers within the magma chamber, both of those 2.5, but you will see 1.8 kilometers, 5 point. Yeah, we got fracturing going on, and I certainly hope that they are watching 
watching this. Now that one is way over here on the, the um, eastern side of 1.9. Now that was deep. Yeah, it's probably magma coming up. 1.1 kilometer, 6.9 kilometers, 1.1 kilometer. Yeah, yeah. 8.2 kilometers is about 5 miles in depth. We got multiple, in my opinion, multiple uh, channels of magma coming up in this area. Multiple. Okay, 7.2, 1.9, 2.3, 1.6. This is the depth of them showing uh 2.0 2.0 7.7 yeah we got magma coming up let me show you something else this is a spectrogram from little west thumb of the 3.1 earthquake it actually is a 3.17 almost a 3.2 there's its signature we got volcanic and harmonic tremors i talked about volcanic they're very deep uh, weld, I guess you could say, earthquakes, and then we got the harmonic. I'll make this bigger. The harmonic are just going gently up and down. There has been more than 140 earthquakes there at Yellowstone. On the left is uh, the borehole from Norris Geyser Basin. In the center is the Little West Thumb, and then here on the right is the promontory. And you can see all the gases coming up. The darker the color, uh, the more activity that it picked up, a lot more than 140 earthquakes. Any earthquake has a 30% chance, a 20% chance of being a foreshock for something much larger. If they have a magnitude 5 there at the lake, I guarantee they'll probably have a hydrothermal eruption, meaning the... Um, magma the lava it's called magma when it's still under the ground um, would have erupted you'll have a tsunami heaven help any of the people that are grant village and other places the fishing bridge that are visiting or camping or sightseeing there yeah they're gonna be um yeah their <laughs> their seconds will be up inside the caldera will not require a large earthquake for a volcanic eruption probably a magnitude five Outside of the caldera, you can have a large earthquake without an eruption. Now, I marked out in red um, these shallow earthquakes. We got them there, and we got them there. And this is the area of the crack. And I have been showing you the intrusion, the uh, magma trying to come up in this location repeatedly I've been trying to tell you guys I've told you how Hank Hessler who uh, was the in-house geologist um, there at Yellowstone said that when they started having magnitude 2 or greater earthquakes that they would watch it closely they would be very concerned and I've told you how there's been so many magnitude earthquakes that they have not been reporting any volcano has a chance of erupting without any notice within 10 minutes. So that would be in a magma chamber. Here on this web page from 2015, we show uh, the upper crust, so the rhyolite cap, uh, the partial melt, uh, the different channels coming up of the uh, magma. Now this is from 2015. They know that in the upper crust, there is pockets of melt. I've talked about that. Um, that is only 600 feet under where people are walking. National Geographic has a 3D model showing the 45 mile wide, 72 kilometer, uh, 410 mile deep plume of hot molten rock rising under Yellowstone. Yellowstone had smaller eruptions just 10,000 years ago. In 2015, I believe it was, maybe 2016, they found that there is enough magma to fill up the Grand Canyon 11 and a half times. Just a few years ago, they found out the water of Yellowstone Lake was twice as hot as what they previously thought it to be. It had risen, yeah, that much. 
On this webpage, USGS said a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash and short-term years to decade changes to the global climate. Those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone's would be affected by pyroclastic flows, while other places in the United States would be impacting by, impacted by falling ash. They still have the level green and say that earthquakes warms are very common, not magnitude twos or graders or magnitude threes. Those are not common. All these trees that are now dying off grew up during the quiet period. Uh, Yellowstone's been recharging for another super eruption. Hopefully it won't be a super eruption, but for another eruption. Um, and is releasing gases, and that's why these trees are dying. That's why they have buffalo dropping dead. Um, yeah, these are all signs that it's recharging. Remember the new thermal area where the trees that had died? An example, this is from 2015 on Google Earth. All these trees that were laying on the ground, they had discovered, turned to charcoal because of the heat rising up. This has not been updated, this image, uh, conveniently, probably on purpose. But these dead trees died because first because of the gases coming up, and then they turned to charcoal, like charcoal in your barbecue pit or um, your fireplace, because of the heat coming up from the magma chamber. There was an area here where the uh, magma had found to come up, yeah, and just literally burned it up from the ground up, under the ground up. So now they have 60 earthquakes within Yellowstone Lake listed within the 24 hours. And they have another 3.2 listed, 7.1 kilometers in depth. So that is only about 4 miles. Yeah, and the magma chamber is 3 miles in depth. It's trying to come up. So they're saying this is a 3.1. Here it is registered at Norris Geyser Basin. This is a borehole, borehole 950. We got Little West Thumb. And then we got the promontory on the right. Let's look at the signatures here. All right, it is larger at the promontory. And let's see how big it was. Were they right or not? Were they telling the truth or not? Look at all these marked in red. I come up with a magnitude 3.3. .3. There's another one here. Let's see what time. 1941. So this is 1944. Um, let's go to the spectrogram. Yeah, look at how long the mag... Look at the heat that came up. Okay, 1941. All right, that would be a magnitude 2.60. And there was one afterwards at 1942. This is at um 3.3. .3. Yeah, they've stopped reporting. We got another one right here at 1931. Uh, 2.76. There's its spectrogram. Let's look at the signature. 1254. 12.54 and 45 seconds. There's its spectrogram. Let's see how big it was. That comes in as a 3.01 at least. It was probably larger. Another, yeah, another 3. I wouldn't be in the park right now. I would leave. I mean, people reported feeling that other 3.1. And there's been more than two. Yeah, we got another one right there. 1412. Yeah. Can you sue USGS? Can you sue uh, the United States government for downplaying the threat if and when this thing decides to erupt? How big was this one? Another one, 3.07.
multiple threes. And look at the hot gases coming up. Let's look at the signature. Okay, we got between uh, one, yeah, yeah, one hertz and ten hertz. Um, yeah, volcanic and harmonic tremors. Let's bring this over. See volcanic, yeah, and harmonic. See, this is a program developed by the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, Seismic Wave Analysis Real-Time Monitoring, IRIS. Five hours. Can you make it down those windy mountain roads with all the construction that's currently going on? Can you get out of the pyroclastic flow? 500 miles would be vaporized. So let's figure 250 miles from the center of where it decides to erupt. Um, yeah, five hours. Can you get out in five hours? Can you race a pyroclastic flow? The answer is no. If you want to read a good book about USGS and I don't know if you want to call it stupidity or whatever, read C Cataclysm by Tim Washburn. It's about the eruption of Yellowstone and the leading up to the eruption. And, yeah, a whole series of um, events that they tended to ignore. Yeah, really good book. You can read the book online. It's got all the different chapters here. I, I bought the book and I read it about a year ago. Um, but this is great. They actually have it online. I recommend it as a read for all the screw-ups that they could possibly do uh, for the eruption of uh, Yellowstone. Anyways, like I always say, you can't predict when a volcano is going to erupt. It could erupt within 10 minutes. It could settle down. Um, it just might be a warning shot for people from God to be prepared. Uh, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, thank you very much for your support. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.